single day for the last three years, I've woke up to pills. Now I can't do anything. I miss doing the flowers so much. You are listening to the Michigan victims of a medical disaster. Three and a half years later, they are all paying a painful price. They were given tainted steroid shots that killed 19 people in our state and made hundreds of others sick. But tonight, no one is in jail. The victims have yet to see a dime for all that they've endured. Joanne Purton shows us where those victims are now and how they believe their nightmare has become a money grab. They met at Broadcast House, once strangers, now leaning on each other after a national medical tragedy forged a heartbreaking bond. You know, at 52 years old, I had my life ripped out from underneath me. It's been a nightmare that's uh, that haven't ended yet. Evelyn's health kept her from making the trip to Southfield. We caught up with her in her Pinckney home. And now I can't do anything. I miss doing the flowers so much. Life changed for Evelyn and so many others in 2012 when they received a steroid shot for back pain. Turns out those shots made by the New England Compounding Center in Massachusetts were tainted with mold. 753 people in 20 states got sick with fungal infections, including meningitis. 64 died. Michigan was among the hardest hit. Penny LaPerriere's husband, Lynn, died a month after getting his shot. During the time that he was in the hospital, he was in excruciating pain. It was just horrific. I spent 109 days straight in there in the hospital and uh, had three back surgeries to scrub the black mold off my spine. The drug victims took to fight the fungus was brutal and expensive. My copay was 5000 a month. My wife said, let's stop it at the funeral home. We'll register you now because <laughs> we can't pay $5,000. Years later, they all complain of short-term memory and concentration problems, a lack of energy, and often pain. Every single day for the last three years, I woke up to pills. We have all just been swept under the rug, and we're the FDA and the government's dirty little secret. At congressional hearings in 2012, it became clear that lack of oversight from the FDA and Massachusetts Health Department contributed to the disaster. NECC's clean room was anything but. The company had been cited before for problems, but continued to operate. I respectfully declined to answer on the basis of my constitutional rights and privileges. NECC's owner, Barry Cadden, pleaded the fifth, and he had nothing to say to me either as reporters sought answers. Is there anything that you can say to them? While Cadden and 13 others are charged criminally in the case, they still haven't faced trial. Last year, a $200 million compensation fund was approved to help the victims. How many of you are confident that you will see some money from the settlements? That's because private insurance companies and Medicare have put liens on the settlement. They want some of the money to recover some of what they paid for the victim's medical treatment. And that doesn't sit well, especially when it comes to Medicare. The federal government failed us. They failed us. The FDA on the one side and then Medicare also run by the government and they want their money back. Early this year, Michigan Senators Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services asking the agency to waive any Medicare liens attached to the compensation fund. Other senators did the same, saying, quote, neither the federal nor state government were actively regulating and monitoring compounding companies, which allowed the NECC to continue making dangerous compounds. In response to both letters, HHS declined to drop the liens, saying essentially it would not be consistent with agency policy. Why is a wrongdoer, if, because the government is one entity, reaching into the pockets of, of these people? Attorney Mark Lipton represents 92 victims. He and other attorneys are in negotiations with private insurers and Medicare right now. We're looking at an agreement that where Medicare's share of the recovery, it's going to range between 10 and 20, 25 percent of the recovery. Um, so that's lower than normal. But Lipton expects private insurers will end up with a greater percentage. Everybody else gets a piece of the pie. We're left with the dish, maybe, and they want the dish too. I had 20 more years to work. I will never get that money that I've lost from working. Many believe when and if they do get paid, it won't cover the out-of-pocket expenses they've incurred, let alone anything for their pain and suffering. I'm just really looking for something that will take their pain away. 
That's what my prayer is. Once an agreement is reached with Medicare and the insurance company, the victims should begin receiving some money. Meantime, the criminal trial for the 14 charged in this case is scheduled to begin in September. I'm Joanne Purton, 7 Action News.